What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about for loops in Java. By far, the most common way to iterate over things is going to be a for loop. Now, for loops on the surface, they look rather complex. If you just look at this for loop, and I've got a, a two examples here. This is not actual real code. This, this right here, do not put this into uh, an IDE because this is not real code. What this is more representative of, of is how for loops actually work. So when you first look at a for loop, your eyes may, at least mine did, my eyes glazed over at what in the heck is all of this stuff in here. So let's just break it down piece by piece and let's just understand kind of how the actual structures of for loops work and what's actually going on here. So for, I probably don't need to explain to you what a for is, but that just starts it. And that's your way of saying to Java, this is a for loop. We need to do a for loop now. <laughs> this is happening. Okay, so that's the easy part. What is actually going on inside of our conditional brackets here? And this is where most people get tripped up. So let's just look at this up here. This is this init word. So whenever you first start a for loop, you actually have to create a variable for the for loop to work off of a traditional for loop. As we get into other, as you get into other forms of for loops, you don't have to actually create <clears throat> this init variable, but for a traditional uh, for loop, you have to create this. Why do you have to create this? Because whenever you are working for in for loops, the I is very important because it's the index and you need to have a variable in here that you can actually manipulate. So if we want to have this variable inside of our for loop to manipulate, we actually have to create it. And you need that variable there because it just doesn't come from anywhere and you need it to be inside of it. And you could declare on the outside, but what's important, and this kind of goes back to what I was saying before, you need to look at these little brackets in here as their own self-contained program in a sense. It's scope. What is inside of here cannot be seen on the outside, seen on the outside. And it's important to initialize a variable because you oftentimes need a variable to work with. So what is this I is equal to 100 part? What is the termination? Well, with a while loop, as I mentioned before, a while loop will go in infinitely. You, you could tell a while loop to go infinitely, but for loops are different in that aspect because you have to, a for loop is when you know when it's going to stop. You know the exact point. Maybe you don't know the exact number, but you want it to end at a certain point. And in order for something to end, there has to be a termination. And there's all different types of ways that you could terminate a for loop. But one of the most common is going to be, I want it to terminate after a certain amount. For loops are customizable. You can do all different types of for loops. But in this case, we are going to terminate. We are going to issue a termination in this for loop once it reaches 100. And number two, or the third is going to be the increment. The increment is important because it's almost what is going to drive the actual for loop forward. The best way that I, and this is kind of a weird example, and we're actually going to model a for loop after an inchworm, is that the I++ is the inch that the inchworm does. And wherever you live, there's probably little worms that you have that, kind of inch along. They just just slowly just go inch by inch. And a for loop is kind of the same way. You need to look at this incrementer as what drives the inchworm further. It goes, you know, just like that, just slowly, but surely, but a computer's, you know, it's a really fast inchworm and it's going at a million miles a second. So maybe not the best example, but it's important to really realize that this I++ is what's pushing the inchworm this way. You could also make it so that the inchworm goes backwards. Maybe the inchworm does a crazy dance or something, or maybe you want the inchworm to go back and forth. That's what the incrementer is for, and it's what actually drives the iteration to a certain extent. Also, let's take a look at a more real example of when you would want your 
uh, actual program or your for loop to terminate based on the length of maybe some type of string. So for loops come in all different sh s s shapes and sizes, and it's important to really realize what you are looking at when you are looking into a for loop. So we still have the init, which is going to be zero, but we have a different way of actually terminating our for loop. So if you look right here, our, our actual for loop is going to terminate when this string ends, and we will code this up in a second. We will actually practice this, and you guys will see this in action. But let's go up here, and let's actually code an inchworm. What if we could actually code an inchworm, and we could model an inchworm's behavior based on some type of for loop that we would actually make ourselves? Kind of an interesting thing to think about. So let's just go ahead in here, and we're going to actually code up once again we're coding this up we got to put fingers to the keyboard we can't just talk about theory all day we actually got to start working on this and let's actually code up our own just simplest for loop we possibly can it's going to be the exact same that we saw in the example before but this is really important how would we model an actual inchworm's behavior and that may be kind of like strange to think about and i you're never going to get this in an algorithm question but we need to use this I because we need to track the life of an inchworm. So we're gonna go up here and we're going to say, at the very beginning of this inchworm's life, we want it to shout out, I am an inchworm and I, I'm alive uh, and uh, I, am at a, I am a inchworm that was just born. <laughs> I am an inchworm that was just born. Okay, so our inchworm, that's what's going to, so as soon as our little baby inchworm is born, it's going to say that it is born. But what's the next part? Inchworms usually eat leaves during the actual life of the inchworm. It's going to eat leaves. It's going to do inchworm things, but more than likely it's just going to eat leaves. So we don't want to put, we don't want to track this. We want this inchworm's life to be very realistic. In each day of this inchworm's life, it's going to eat leaves. So it's going to go eating leaves, inchworm eating leaves and having fun because inchworm, inchworms have fun too. So let's have, let's have a little fun here. So eating leaves and having fun, our inchworm is having a grand old time. Then Inchworms turn into butterflies eventually. Eventually, they can't stay inchworms forever, and eventually they turn into beautiful butterflies. So what's going to happen is this beautiful little inchworm is going to be bur or it's going to turn into a cocoon and fly away. So we're going to go up here. Inchworm turned into butterfly, into butterfly and flew away. And we're going to go up here and flew away. So now we have correctly built the life of an inchworm let's just go ahead and see what happens and let's just see what happens or what's going to happen when we actually run this thing so we're going to go here and as you can see the life of an inchworm i'm an inchworm i was just born it was created and then for each iteration it's going to go through it's going to say eating leaves and having fun at the very end what we have here we have inchworm inchworm i put inch there inchworm turned into a butterfly and flew away isn't that beautiful a beautiful little story and our day is so much brighter because of it but let's also look at a more realistic example of maybe you were doing a for loop through a string and this is where our for loop can change for loops like i said they don't always for loops have all different sh s shapes and sizes, and it's important to realize what you're looking at whenever you see this length thing right here. So in this case, we're actually going to iterate over the string. We're just going to go through it, and we're going to print out each one. It's going to go B-E-A-V-E-R, and this is going to be our favorite animal. And we're going to iterate over the string of our favorite animal. So Let's go ahead and here, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete this, and we will actually iterate through a string. So we'll have string, and we'll go up here, put your favorite animal. You could put, um, 
I'm going to go with beaver. Beavers are always my favorite animals right now. Sometimes they change, but I'm going to go in here and then I'm going to go, go ahead and initialize this variable. Remember, we've got three parts of our for loop. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to initialize our I, then we're going to go in here and we're going to say I is less than beaver dot beaver or favorite animal dot length. Then we're also, remember we got to put our little incrementer because our for loops are like little inchworms. They need to be moving, they need to be incrementing along. And then we're going to go in here and this is where things might get a little tricky. Um, we'll, we'll say letter is equal to, and then we also have to go in and print out this letter. So. This is where you could get tripped up. It's almost an instinct for a lot of people to want to reach into there and actually try to manipulate the favorite animal. So if I go favorite animal and I keep type, typing beer, so if I iterate into the favorite animal, you can't do this. And first thing that a lot of people are going to want to do is try to iterate over that. But if you look at it right here, let's go ahead, array found, array type expected and found a string. So technically it's an array, but you can't actually reach into it and manipulate it like you would an array. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to use something called a char at. And the char at is where you're going to put your eyes so that you can actually manipulate stuff and you can see what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this green button and we're gonna watch what happens in the console. So we go ahead, we hit it, and letter, and it prints out each and every letter inside of our for loop. And it does this because we have this dot length um, method, which will do the calculation to see how long it is. And that's very powerful because you don't have to count and you don't have to go into here and be like zero, one, two, three, four, and then type into here what the actual value is. So if so if I did, I would have to do something like that, but because we have that dot length variable, it will automatically do everything for us. And we don't have to actually worry about terminating our for loop and worrying about how long it is. It will just automatically do everything for us. And that's kind of the beauty of dot length method. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.